Well, you remember that what we're the the problem as soon as we involve uh, solving equations that have trig functions in them is this thing is repetitive, so there's going to be an infinite number of places where it's 0.5. Don't lose sight of what it is. When you first started solving equations in grade whatever six or seven or probably grade two, you just use a box, right? Box plus two equals five. You didn't lose sight of the fact that I'm just looking for the number that goes there. But by the time you get to grade 12, you're, there's so many steps that you forget what you're actually doing. You're just looking for what this is. You're looking for what that number is. Since, since sine x, if you think about the graph of this, the graph looks something like this, right? It's repetitive like this. It repeats a whole bunch of times, and you're just looking for where it is equal to 0.5, which is somewhere in here, right? There's going to be a whole bunch of places where they're equal. Okay, you're looking for a lot of, there's a lot of places, but they're all related. If you can find one of them, and then you know something about the graph, you can find how to get the next one, and the next one, right? The, all the ones related. How far apart will those be? How far apart is, how far apart is that solution from that solution? 2 pi, right? This is going to be 2 pi. This is going to be 2 pi to the next one here. They're all going to be 2 pi apart, right? Because the period of that thing is 2 pi. And then if we could find this one, that's related, that one's related to that one and that one, right? If you can find the solutions within one cycle of the graph, then you can express how the rest of them are. So this is why it says find the solutions if x is restricted. This is restricted. What does restricted mean? What is it, why is it called a restricted movie? What does the word restricted mean if you have a restriction on something? Not allowed. Something's not allowed. Or something is less than, you know, not all the people, right? Not all the people can go to that movie. Not all the values or X is allowed to be here, right? X is restricted to between 0 and 2 pi. So what we're doing is we're only looking up to this point right here, right? So you're looking, you're just looking at 2 pi. How many solutions are there going to be in 2 pi? How many solutions in that yellow part there? There's going to be two, right? There's just those two pink values. You actually, since this is 0.5, this is actually one of those special triangle ones. You could actually solve this one with exact values. You could say it's pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 if you wanted to. But let's pretend that uh, we don't know anything about those right now. The two methods you can use here are one is to graph sine x and 0.5 separately, making sure you're in radian mode because we're solving in radians. This thing graphs in radians. Well, it graphs in either one, I guess, if you change your window. But I would set the, if you're graphing between 0 and 2 pi, I would make the x values between 0 and 2 pi. You can actually put pi there if you want in the window. Maybe a good scale would be, if you're going up to 2 pi, pi divided by what would be a good scale? Pi divided by 2, probably. Vertically, what do we know here? I would say, I don't know, negative 2 to positive 2 or something like that. So then you have the trig function, and you have your 0.5. You're looking for where those cross. I'm going to graph the other way on here in a second, but we're looking for these two points here. If you, find, if you go through and find them, uh, and you find the intersection here, intersect, first curve, second curve, guess, I think it's like 0.52 and 2.62. I won't bore you with finding the other one, but if you go do, it's, I think it's 0.52. The two solutions here are x equals 0.52 and 2.62. It happens in this case that those are those exact values, but we don't. Let's pretend we don't know that right now. The other way to solve this is to is to graph. So this was one way: y1 equals sine x, y2 equals 0.5, and then find the intersection. The other way is to graph y1 equals move everything over to one side. If you have sine x equals 0.5, graph sine x minus 0.5, right? Change this around to equal to make it equal to 0. So this is the other way. Change it around to sine x minus 0.5 equals 0. 
and then graph this, and then find the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are the zeros of the function, the solutions to that equation. Okay? On here, you look, because at least one of you was wondering, why does it why does it look different? The graph's going to look different when you change this, right? If I, I'm going to put in the other thing here, which is sine x minus 0.5. And we'll maybe change the line style so we don't get mixed up with what it is and make that a thick line. So there's the first thing. This is this is the other graph, right? It makes sense that it's – this is something you need to know for your Chapter 4 test anyways is um, transformations, right? Sine x minus 0. 0.5 is just shifting the sine curve down 0. 0.5. It goes down a half. The intersection of these, of these two things is the same as the x-intercept of these. They're the same values here, right? You're going to get the same x values, which is what you're looking for. So either way you do it, you get the same x values. If you find the if you find the x-intercepts of that thick curve there, it gives you the same two values. It gives you x equals 0.52 and 2.62. Those two values. If you want the if you want the solution over the real numbers, this is now where there is no restriction on x. No restriction on x. Up here x was restricted to just one cycle. Here there's no restriction. What did we say? How are the other solutions related to those first two solutions? Again, how are these solutions related? How far apart are they? What do I have to do to get the next one? Plus, Yeah, plus or minus 2 pi, right? If you have this graph here and you found that you found this solution and this solution. If you want the next ones, you take this and you add on 2 pi plus 2 pi plus another 2 pi plus another 2 pi. You add on multiples of 2 pi. So the way you can express this is x is, and I should actually put approximately here. This is probably wrong to put equals. You should put approximately if you're rounding it off. x is approximately 0.52 plus multiples of 2 pi. How do you write multiples of 2 pi mathematically? 2 pi n, or x equals 2.62 plus 2 pi n. Really, we should be putting where n is an integer. n equals, that looks silly. Where n is an integer, just to specify. That's, that's it, right? We're going to learn some algebraic methods later. You're going to be able to solve this algebraically using the calculator, um, using the trig functions on the calculator. You're going to be able to solve some. Some of them you won't be able to solve algebraically at all. For now, for this tutorial, you're solving them graphically. I wanted you to have this first because then later when we're solving algebraic things, you can always check your answer this way and do things two ways. If you're taking a calculus course next year, that's really uh, emphasized as being able to solve things two ways and check your answer. It gives you a lot more confidence in what you're doing. There isn't a lot to do here. There's this. You can work on this now. You can work on it later and focus on the pretest, which I'll give you back right now. It's entirely up to you. But we've kind of checked this off our list. Next time we're doing the test. But the time after that, we are going to be looking at thing number two here. Okay?